Directors of the New York Transportation Development Corporation for Friday, May 13, 2016. I'd like to note for the record that this meeting is being webcast and that we welcome public comment on the items in our agenda. The directors have received the relevant written materials in advance and are free to ask questions at any time. Before we begin with the substantive portion of the meeting, I'd like to ask the directors whether anyone has any potential conflict of interest with respect to any of the items on the agenda. If so, I would ask you to please make the appropriate disclosure at this time and we will be sure to remind you to recuse yourselves. Not hearing any. The foregoing having been noted for the record, I'd now like to, which there were none, and to request Jonathan Byer to present the only item on today's agenda. Jonathan will be requesting board authorization to amend the final maturity date in connection with the sale and delivery of the New York Transportation Development Corporation Special Facilities Bond Series 2016. Jonathan, when you're ready, I feel like I did that very quickly. I just <laughs> myself on that. Okay, Jonathan. Okay, thank you. Uh, at the, at the Transportation Development Corporation's uh, meeting on April 26, the corporation was specifically asked to delegate authority to its officers to approve the maturities, prices, yields, and other terms of the Series 2016 bonds for the LaGuardia Airport. Um, these bonds are expected to be priced on May 17, 2016. The delegation of authority outlined certain parameters relating to the terms of the bonds, including providing that the final maturity of the series 2016 bonds would not extend past July 1st, 2050, which would be approximately six months prior to the December 30, 2050 expiration date of the lease agreement between the Port Authority and the borrower. Now, subsequent to that meeting, uh, the underwriters and the borrower advised the corporation that in accordance with their financial mo modeling, the final maturity date of the Series 2016 bonds should be authorized to extend an additional six months to January 1st, 2051. It's basically extending the final maturity date that the, that the officers are authorized uh, to, to execute uh, at, at, the, at the pricing. Uh, there, there is uh, sort of an unusual anomaly that, one, the, the port lease expires on December 30th, not December 31st, which is a kind of odd. Um, and it was, you know, part of the reason that we're, we're doing this is because there was a concern that if the maturities, that we wanted the, the bond proceeds are what provide the, the, the money for the lease, and there was concern that if the bonds expired, uh, before or after the lease, there wouldn't be enough money to actually make the lease payment. But in fact, there are so many escrow accounts and rents being paid at the beginning of the month that there will be sufficient funds. So the anomaly of the dates is really not material or significant. There, there will be plenty of money in 2000, in 2050, accumulated in the various accounts. So this would be 35 year bonds? Uh, Let's see, with 2016 to 2020. No. 2051 is the final maturity. 2051. Mm -hmm. 35 years. Yes. 35 years. Yes. Yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> Take out right. we'll, we'll call another board meeting then to announce that. Uh, okay, good. So. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, that, that, that's okay. No, that was, that, that was really, I mean, other than uh, requesting that the, the board uh, authorize the, the amendment of the prior resolution relating to these bonds to provide for that final maturity um, past, past uh, July 1, 2050, uh, I've completed my presentation. Okay. Are there any questions, any questions at all from the directors on this item? Nope. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know. So wait for the vote. Okay. I, I was just going to give like a, um, oh, sure. an update. Great. And, you know, what I would like to do is let you know where we are, let the board know where we are in this process since our last board meeting, which was April 26. And immediately after that board meeting, we got out the preliminary official statement, and that statement gives all the details about the bond offering, the project, the revenues that will support the bonds, and any other thing that pertains to the bonds, um, will, which will help market the bonds. This is the first marketing tool that we have to um, get out to the street and give details about the bonds. Following that, there were three institutional investor luncheons. Um, there was one in New York, one in Boston, and one in Chicago. 
And there were over 100 firms that attended these meetings. It was a very well-attended meeting, and the responses were positive. Following these luncheons, um, there are one-on-one -on -one meetings. If an institutional investor wanted any more information, they, you know, we requested a one-on-one -on -one meeting, and the underwriters and the appropriate individuals would meet with the investors and provide additional um, information on the bonds. There's also a virtual roadshow that's going on right now that, you know, anyone that would like to get information about the bonds could go online. And there's a presentation there that, you know, tells exactly, you know, the whole, the whole source of, you know, the, the, the bonds and, and the project and, and you know, um, what's, what's supporting the debt service. And as of this morning, there have been 261 individuals that have viewed this um, virtual roadshow. On next Tuesday, the 17th, is when we will be pricing the bonds, and it will be a very hectic day um, because this offering, as, as we came to you on the 26th, in addition to having the tax-exempt and the taxable bonds, there's also an element here that we might do a private placement. Barclays Bank brought this product to um, the um, LaGuardia Gateway Partners, and this will be a taxable issue. Um, and. What will be happening on the 17th is we will get indicative pricing from orders from investors and we will know exactly where the tax exempt bonds are coming in. We would also have the bids for the private placement. So we have individuals from the two financial advisory firms, Frasca and um, Society General, who have worked up models that individually will look at the prices that are received from the tax exempt financing and compare it to the pricing that was, you know, received for the private placement. We have authorization to do up to $500 million in the private placement. So the decision is now based on economics. Once the models are run, if it's decided by the numbers that the private placement is less costly to issue, we will go with the private placement and we'll reduce the um, tax exempt and the taxable. There will be no Series B in that situation. If, there, if we find out that the private placement is more costly, then we will just have a Series A and a Series B. We will definitely have $150 million in taxable, but we will not do the private placement. But there's a flexibility built into this as well that, you know, on Tuesday there could be a scenario that might come up that we might want to, you know, move things around. But, you know, we're prepared um, based upon where the orders come in and the numbers come in. Um, the bonds are rated by Moody's BAA3 and Fitch, it's triple B. And as we have said, um, the underwriters are City, Wells, Barclays, Ramirez, and Siebert. Um, and the bonds are expected to close on June 1st. Now, immediately after closing, um, they will start to spend the money on the project. And the first thing that they're going to be looking at will um, be the reconstruction of the head house. And that's the area that when you get out of your car or taxi, you go right into the airport, that's the head house. And that construction is going to start immediately. And it is estimated that it will go until June 6, 2020. After that, they're going to start all in um, 2016, in September 2016 and November 2016. They will start the Concourse B East and Concourse B North, and that's where the planes pull into the gates. Um, and then after that, there's a whole logistics as to what's going to be then added on to the project. The whole project is expected to be um, substantially completed by July 8th, 2022. So as soon as we close the bonds, there are plans to start the project immediately. And remind me the uh, volume of bonds. The right. The, the, we're looking at issuing $2.5 billion. Um, we came to the board and we got $3 billion in authorization. Yeah. We don't plan to do that, but that also is flexibility. But we plan to issue um, 2.5. Okay. And with all with the same maturity? <laughs> no, no. Th this is going to go out to um, 45 years. You know, th this, there's a whole schedule of uh, maturities. 2051. Yeah, 2051. 35, 35 years. Yeah, 35 years. Okay. That was just a test that everyone was really listening to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but but at, as with other bond closings, you know, once we have the final prices, we will email the board and let you know how we did with the pricing. 
Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a favorite. It seems like, you know, things change a lot in a day, I suppose, sometimes. But it seems like a pretty favorable environment. Again, continues to be mm-hmm. for, um, for the yield. I mean, yeah, it, it's a good market to be in right now. And, you know, the responses we've gotten so far, the underwriters have gotten, are extremely positive. Yeah. So we're expecting very good results on this. So I would just say there has been a lot of interest in taking advantage of this strong bond market. And our counsel who's here, Chris Reitzel from Squire Patent Boggs, has been working around the clock. And Larry Belinsky from Fraskin Associates, they have been, you know, burning the midnight oil for months on this project, and we're really grateful for their help. And one of Chris's partners had a baby in the middle of it and just kept right on going. <laughs> <laughs> a <So>. baby's billing. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a family effort. Okay, good. Way to go. Glad we all chip in. Uh, any other questions? Uh, just for sorry. clarity. We've already delegated the res- the authorization yes. to the officers to make a decision about yeah. the private placement. Yes, Is you have. Taxable, not taxable. Yes, you did. Mm-hmm. And the other interesting thing to note is that these are closing on June 1st. That's the anticipated closing date. That's the same day that the lease will, that LaGuardia General uh, Gateway Partners will enter into a lease with the Port Authority, and they'll begin on that date to manage the airport and to begin the construction. So you'll see work begin very soon. And it's a phase construction project. So you'll so over the next, I think it's six years, you, Terminal um, B, the central terminal, will open in phases to the public. And by twenty, by some period in 2018, one of the um, main concourses. concourses will be opening to the public. A very fast schedule they have. Okay. And they're planning immediately to upgrade retail facilities, so we may start to see changes right away. Okay. Any other questions from any other directors? Any comments from the public? Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, George. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, any opposed? None. Carried. I don't think we have any other business. There is there a motion to adjourn? Okay.